hope you can't see it. Good. <laughs> oh, we'll just leave that right there. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Whatever time you're watching this, thanks for watching Common Sense Fishing. Well, since it's live right now, I'm assuming you're watching it right now. But uh, if you're watching this later, thanks for watching. Smash that subscribe and like button. If you're new to the channel, check it out. We talk about fishing stuff, all kinds of cool stuff. As you can see, a lot of collectibles, video games, you name it. We go down lots of rabbit holes here. Tonight's video, I've got a good video for you guys. We're going to have the members giveaway tonight. So uh, we offer memberships available. And I also wanted to make an announcement that members can request uh, once a month a one-on-one -on -one session with me if they want to like talk about fishing, if they have any questions, if they want to break down a lake, even in their state. I'll go to Google Earth. We'll have a one-on-one -on -one session and uh, I'll live stream with just that member only. So we'll have some uh, cool things coming around the corners. But uh, basically every month we do a giveaway. And uh, once we hit 10K, we'll be able to have merch on the shelf and there'll be discounts, all that good stuff. Got an annoying fly who's been bugging me all day. It's winter time, and this is like the last stubborn fly because I got a heater in here, air conditioner, all that good stuff. So, anyways, tonight's video, I've got a great video for you guys. We're gonna do a double giveaway, like I said. So members and then one for subscribers. So all you have to do is make sure you hit the subscribe button, like this video, leave a comment on the live stream here in a little while once we uh get things going and we'll we'll get that ball rolling. So pretty easy uh, rules, so not much to it. So thank you everybody for watching tonight, and I jumped on a minute early. I've got also two techniques that uh, not a lot of people know about. Now, I did a video on this last year, and it got a little bit of traction, um, but I don't think a lot of people still don't know about this. So we're going to represent it because this is the time of year you should be doing it. Hey, what's going on, Dustin? Nice to see you on. So this is the time of year where this, this special technique is going to really come in handy and uh, and, and kick butt. So I, I, I'm a yeah, stupid fly. So I'm super excited to share it with you guys, and I just can't wait. So uh, I've got it waiting right over there. We'll wait till a little bit of time goes by. I swear I'm going to smack this damn fly out the air. God, I don't know if this thing is annoying me as much as it is you guys, but man, I need to get like the hairspray bottle and a lighter and take this bastard out one way or another. So anyways, <clears throat> he'll be back to bug me too, I know. Going to end up messing with the live stream. That'll be okay. He'll be like the homie for the night, I guess, right? And then I'll kill him later when I get a chance. <laughs> but uh I want to go over some different lures tonight. We're going to go over some different things to help out with wintertime fishing, the fall to winter transition, early and mid, you know, to deep winter, and talk about how to change, how to feel the change in fishing, how to use your fish finder, find fish when they're not there. So, hey, hey, Pops, how's it going? Keeping it real. What's going on, Funkin' CT? <laughs> uh, nice to see you on. Pops in the house. Sweet. Yep. Um, yeah, it's, a uh, it's been a good wild ride so far. So thanks everybody for jumping on. Now I've got a little tip for everybody. We're going to wait a few minutes and then we're going to talk about that first. We'll jump into the giveaways. So we have two of them in the, in the house tonight. So super excited to, uh, to help give back to the fishing community. We're going to talk about some fishing lures, wintertime fishing, like how to figure them out, where they go. And uh, since I'm stuck on shore, I think I'll share some of our little secrets on how to avoid getting snagged as much and some of the tricks you can do uh, to catch fish from shore a little bit easier. So I wish I had the whiteboard set up right here. I could really draw some things and make it make a little bit more sense. But uh, if, you're, if you're shore fishing this winter, um, I want to try to help up your game if you're especially fishing like the shores of Don Pedro, McClure, stuff like that. What's going on, Racho? So good job, man. Proud of you guys. You did great in the tournament. So sweet. <sighs> oh, man, that's got to be awesome. The funk over here is in Florida right now. I was telling them last time I was in Florida, I flew over 
and I, I took a plane so I couldn't take anything. And I stopped at the local Walmart there and I got a fishing pole, a temporary license and like some Cinco's poppers, some other just random stuff, not nothing too much, a cheap spool of line. I went to town and I just had fun the whole week I was there. It was so awesome. I caught so many fish. It was a great time. I got pictures with me and the signs that say, don't feed the alligators. <laughs> so enjoy yourself. Have a great time. Stay safe, you know, be good. And uh, if you have little ones, remember the ponds all do have alligators. So be careful there. But uh, uh, pretty much anything with water potentially could have an alligator, you know. That's uh, one of the crazy things about Florida. It's so awesome, though. I liked it the week I was there, but it was uh, – actually, I've been there twice. But the but the week I was there, when I was there for like over a week, that was uh, that was pretty, pretty intense, you know. Um, it, it was there when it was real humid, and it was just like – it was, it was like, man, you, you, you don't get, have, you're not going to be big here. I, I mean, I'm sure there are, but I was like, I would lose weight super quick. Pew. Talking about sweating, air, like, oh man, horrible. It's like being in the sauna, but it was so fun at the same time, you know, and then we'd just go jump in the swimming pool and get wet. So it was awesome. But anyways, nice to see everybody on a hey, Gerbs. You know, we're going to have a double giveaway tonight. So stay tuned, everybody. Uh, what we're going to be doing is having the members giveaway. So this is your last chance before the giveaway here to get in on it. So all members are going to get entered, whether present or not. And uh, we're going to give them a tackle pack. Now, I try to tie everything in. So if those of you who aren't aware, we have a community tab. And I also put out, like, uh, posts and stuff, right? So I did a – let's find it here. So I did a um, – a poll asking you guys, what did you want for the November's members only giveaway? And I gave you guys four options of like a mega bass or a LV 500 river to sea, something like that. <clears throat> the other thing was high end plastics kit. After that was terminal tackle kit and then a uh, big swim bait or wake bait. And it was almost overwhelmingly, Mega Bass LV 500 River to Sea. So it looks like that's going to be the winner tonight. Before we have the actual roll, go make sure you vote. If uh, you know you don't like what you hear, maybe you want the big swim bait. We'll go hit that button. <clears throat> Am I giving away free beer? Yeah, when we go fishing. Yeah, sure. You know, I'll share. <laughs> Had some crazy teeth. Had to wear a glove. Oh, I'm sure. Man, these flies are insane annoying. Oh, goodness. I need to, like, turn on the AC, but it's kind of cold in here. The wife just brought in the yummies. Oh, yeah. Sticky rice and chicken. I just got to fend off the flies, but now they'll probably have something else to bug instead of me. But I'm going to eat some sticky rice. I love it. Oh, yeah. My favorite thing. And then the chili sauce. We make our own that sweet chili dipping stuff. Ooh, that's super spicy. Mm. 74%? 74 percent, seventy-four degrees, huh? Man, well, I should have had her bring me something to drink. Better text her. Hold on, guys. Sorry, and gals or whoever. Let me text her real quick. See if she can bring me. <clears throat> Sorry, folks. That way I can get something to drink for tonight. Goodness. This is so annoying. Hey, Mike Dozier, how's it going? I'm still waiting on the call. All right. Enchiladas over here tonight. Heck, yeah. I love it. I love simple. Like, I love my one of my favorite meals. A little sidetrack here is going to be sticky rice. Right, just plain sticky rice. Uh, we have the the basket, and you know we make it at home, and then um, just chicken, you know, and just chicky sticky rice and chicken. That's it. I'm a simple man. Just give me a piece of chicken, sticky rice, spicy oil dip. Mm. 
All right. Those guys are annoying. They're over there for now. Yo, 74% was the winner on the community tab. Uh, right? <clears throat> yeah, we'll uh we'll hook you guys up. So we'll be sending out, you know, a nice lure packet. Cause so far that's the winner right there. So I'm gonna make sure the members get something nice. And then uh, we're going to do the subscriber one next. So uh, we're going to have two tonight. One to say a big thank you. It's my birthday this weekend. So I'm super excited. I don't have no boat. So I'm going to fish from shore somewhere. But um, I get my kids back right before my birthday too. So that's a cool birthday present. You know, they get to go be with their mom for Thanksgiving week. So <clears throat> thanks, babe. So they'll be back. Ooh. Heck yeah. Thanks. Ghost Shad. Yeah, Ghost Shad is, is killer, isn't it? So Sexy Shad, Ghost Shad. I like a Ghost Minnow, Delta Craw, Cold-Blooded. Well, it depends on what company you're getting them from. Aurora Black. Oh, yeah. I'm down. Yeah, thanks, man. So, yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy to go fishing. I don't have, man, I don't have nowhere to go. So, it'd just be, uh, I have the kids coming back, and then that's it. Thanksgiving's just going to be kind of low-key. Not a lot of people in the house, but we're going to brine the turkey, get down, make some mashed potatoes and gravy. That's my favorite. Brine your turkey, mashed potatoes and gravy. Oh. That's the diggings right there. And then I love making apple sausage um, stuffing. And then um, one of the other things can be like a green bean casserole with the cream of uh, mushroom soup, the green beans, and then the French onions on the across the top. Bake that. I'll go with those. But other than that, nah, uh, no. <laughs> I got you, Funk. No, so happy birthday to me. Yep. So I'll be turning 40. Big 4-0. I'll be 40 uh November 27th. So <clears throat> yeah, obviously 1981. So uh, I'll be 40 this year. So it's like, ooh, that's always fun. Oh man. I don't think you're supposed to tell your birthday out on the internet, but anyways. <laughs> hey Ronald, good to see you in here. Damn, I'm old, huh? That's right. I'm an old man. I'm an old timer. I feel older. I feel like I'm 50, but hey, I had a great life. I lived like I'm, I'm 90, though. Trust me. I've been there, done that. Uh, 40 day. Yep, I'm 40. So look at all this. Look at all this gray hair. Like, God. Hey, I'm not going to go bald, though. That's a good thing. So I'll be one of them dudes that's rocking a nice head of hair, you know, when I'm in, in my older age. But. It's going to be white, though, so I'm like, whatever. I'm cool. <laughs> I got a buddy who's uh, 41, like Gerbs, and he looks like he's probably about 30, 28. A little bastard. So take care of yourself, right? And Don't get all stressed and get the wrinkles in the forehead from, like, having, like, uh, or, uh, like squinting and stuff. That'll do it. And then the gray hair. I swear gray hair must... To me, they say it's like hereditary, but I think it comes in from stress, anxiety, worry. It's like I'll be seeing kids that are like 13, 14 years old popping out gray hairs already like, whoa, that's not normal. <clears throat> Salute to everybody, though. Thanks, everybody, for the birthday wishes. But we'll still have a couple more shows before my birthday. So, yeah, because what? Today's Monday. It's the 22nd. So I hate to bore you guys. I'm sorry. We're going to give you guys some fishing tips, though. I was actually just hoping to get more people on so that I can give this tip and trip away, show you some modifications on it, explain it, answer any questions, talk about it for a minute, and then we're going to get into the giveaways. So 
I don't want to drag you guys on too crazy. Yeah, so we're going to have Wednesday and Friday. My birthday is going to be Saturday. So my kids are coming in, I think, Friday uh, afternoon for Friday night. <clears throat> and then I'll have uh, all day Saturday or Sunday. Then I'm going to probably work Monday, you know, the next week. Got to try to get out there and hustle and make some money, right? Pay the bills somehow. Because <coughs> I saved X amount of money, which is all I could save, but I managed to build up and save. And it's almost gone, you know, from the summer because that's our busy time. That's when we make all our money. So we work hard. So it's winding down, but I'm doing all right still. So, And uh, next thing you know, the, it'll be warm again. Springtime will be here. And this is a brutal area. People need their ACs. So it doesn't get that cold here. I might do some work up in Mariposa in the mountains and stuff. Um, but I also work in the Bay Area. So I do commercial, all kinds of crazy stuff. But anyways, enough about me working. I hate work is uh, this is fun time, fishing talk. All right. So uh, you are all young. All right. First year on a boat, I'm a newbie. Where are the bass at? All right, so right now the bass are either doing two things. Um, sometimes, see, they're always moving and adjusting. They're not always like, you can't say all year they're doing this. or it, it, They go through cycles and phases, even in throughout the winter or the, the, the fall, the transitions in between. There will be days when you can find a, a decent amount of bass up shallow and they'll be holding on key structure. While there'll be a majority of the bass will be doing a certain thing, right? The key nice fish will sometimes start doing something else. And so uh, with that being said, there's a couple of different check-ins, right? That they'll usually be doing this time of year, which basically with the nights cold enough and the water temperature, you really got to watch the water temperature and think about Think about how it sets up in spring, and right. So when the water temperature is cold and it's winter time, right, and the water temperature is in the 40s, upper mid to upper 40s, how do the bass act, right? And then you have your uh, water temperature when it starts raising into 48, 49. You start, you know, bass start doing a different thing, right? They start hitting pre-spawn at a certain point as the water temperature uh, raises even more, and they start moving and cruising around and lifting up off the bottom. And then when fronts come in, they'll push back down. So you got to understand another thing is uh, cold fronts will almost always push bass off and down a little bit, while warm, warm fronts will usually pull them up and forward a little bit. Not always forward, but at least up. And so by what I mean by that is say it's in the middle of winter and it's you've been having a month of, of freezing days. And in that month of every day, the average temperature is about 50 and the low is like 30, right? And it's really cold or even lower because we're talking California right now, right? So the mother load lakes. So let's say you have a snap of that. But in that week, you have a dip where it's, it's actually 38 to 40 something degrees in the daytime and a low of like 15, that extreme dip is going to be a cold front within a cold season, right? So, and there will be times where it does that multiple times. And so you can look, there, the fish in those times will usually kind of do those similar things. So for example, if in the winter time, they're kind of moving slowly around <clears throat> and shifting from one place to another, hanging on main lake points or in the back of kind of cuts and uh, secondary points and channel swings and way deep off in 40 to 80 feet of water. Who knows? But, you know, in that nice, in the best thermocline and area that they can be where the oxygen's right and the temperature is as warm as possible for them, right? So when, when they're doing that, and then one of those massive cold fronts goes in, they'll usually push even lower. Wherever they're sitting, they'll go a little bit lower. Or they may be popped up, and you may be able to read them on the graph. And what may happen is they may stay in the same location, but they may sink to the bottom and literally bury themselves. like, Or not bury themselves. Don't think about like a worm or something like burying underneath. But literally just rest right on the ground. 
and they'll rest belly first, just sitting in the rocks or sitting in the muck or mud or silt or whatever have you, making bottom contact with the earth because the earth has like a intermediate, it has like a steady temperature at a certain point, right? And so it, it, it doesn't cool off and, and, and warm up quite like water. It takes longer, right? So if the water's still too cold or it gets even colder, a bass will literally push right down onto the dirt and hunker down and, and not move. And what'll happen is you'll look on your fish finder and the lake will appear dead, like there's nothing there. And the bass really are there. They'll appear as a fine line of silt on your fish finder. They'll look like like a soft bottom. So you'll look in the bottom, will look whatever, and then you'll see like a soft bottom, but it'll kind of have a little bit of some weird humping or contouring. You might even see a fish signature in there here and there if your fish finder is really good or there's enough of them stacked up. But in general, they'll look like they'll camel right into the bottom. So, you know, in the fall and, and winter, just pay attention to the to the swings, right, and the temperatures. So when it gets really cold or it gets colder or it gets warmer. So say you have a, a week where you've been on them, you've been dialed in with the fish, and then all of a sudden it gets in the 70s and it's nice and warm for a few days and bluebird skies. While you it's been in, let's say, the upper 50s right, with a cloud cover, with an occasional rainy day here and there, and then boom, now you have a – the fish are going to change. They're, they're probably going to lift up off the bottom and start moving around and doing stuff. So um, that's a starting point, right? <clears throat> hey, Callie Bear, welcome to the channel. So thanks for joining. Get in on tonight's uh, membership giveaway and on the subscriber giveaway. So appreciate everybody who uh, supports the channel. You know, and one other good thing is we, we do a lot of community service stuff on the channel. So we take care of kids for Christmas. Last year we did over 200. This year we're going to see how many we can take care of. Don't know how much. It's looking like it's going to be a little bit under what last year was. You know, last year we had Kelsey Bass Ranch. So I, I had a lot of connections as far as I had a membership out there. So a lot of people wanted to fish that place. So it was a it was a good way for people to donate money to a good cause and then uh, turn around and get a cool fishing trip out of it. Now it's like I don't have Kelsey, but I can still take people to like lakes and other places. So I've got like Marco Houston wants to go out with me basically as soon as we get the, uh, the boat out the shop, take him on a trip. So hopefully we get the boat out before Christmas. If not, I'm just making sure it's ready by next year because I plan on fishing some tournaments next year, and uh, it's going to be fun. You know, win, lose, or draw, I'm out to have a good time. So you guys ready? We're going to show you two techniques that people don't want you to know. Most people don't know these techniques. They're real weird. There's some variations to them. We're going to talk about that for a little bit. Then we're going to get into the giveaway tonight. So thank you guys for watching. Please smash that like button. And let's let's uh, introduce you guys to what I like to call, I guess at this point, the double rig. Um, there's variations on it. Um, we're going to talk a couple of those. So this, you know, the two techniques are going to be the two main ones that I use. However, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to show you a really unique one that most people most people wouldn't 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 know so check this out what this is is well a lot of people drop shot in the fall or the winter right so if you're gonna throw a drop shot in the fall or the winter instead of using a weight at the bottom you use a lure now this is your imagination going all kinds of things. So the two main ones I was going to talk about was going to be a Ned rig down here. And we're going to show you how that works. And then a swim bait. I'm going to show you why a swim bait and why a Ned rig. So I have both different actions. And so I pair usually, uh, I might pair them up differently on depending on what I'm throwing and on what lake. But I like to use a little bottom walker, cream worms, swim bait they're like 99 cents for two um, and I use these as the weights basically 
So you bomb this sucker out, right? And you can start with something like, say, maybe 18 inches to 24 inches, so a foot and a half to two feet. And you can play with this sucker and make the gap as big as eight to 10 feet maybe. And if you're fishing in an area where you where you know, or you know, let's say the last few days, really schooled up and you're not casting out and you're drop shotting down, you can make this leader as long as you want. Um, it, it just becomes much more challenging. But if you want to cast it decently, then usually you don't want the leader being any longer than four or five feet, but you can still get a decent cast with that. And with 18 to 24 inches, it's a good start. You have something on the bottom and you have something suspended. Now, the reason this is such a killer bait, because you think that sometimes you think the fish are either on the bottom or they're suspended, right? And if your lure is close, the fish should notice it. But I want to tell you something that I've known 100% for sure that sometimes, sure, that, that you could have this on the bottom and you can have this anywhere from a foot or two to three or four feet. And you could have a fish at two and a half feet right perfectly in between this and this, right? And that bass could be right in the middle and you can have a big gap and the bass may still see these lures, right? However, sometimes a bass is activated only when the lure hits the bottom and is resting on the bottom and it will not bite until it hits the bottom. If the lure is moving too fast, the bass will not hit it. If the lure hits the bottom and then pops up, the bass will leave it alone. But if you hit the bottom and you drag or you dead stick it and then you drag and you don't leave the bottom often, there are days when that bite will kill it in the winter time. Then there are days when those fish seem to be, when you have a warm front in the middle of a cold month, those fish seem to pop up a couple feet. And let's say you were throwing a Ned rig and you're bouncing your Ned rig on the bottom and you're not getting many bites. And you look down on the fish finder and those fish are, they appear to be right on the bottom, but you're looking 40 feet deep. And those fish appear to be right in the bottom, but in reality, they're a foot or two off. And they're eating bait fish or eating things that are in front of their face. And that Ned rig crawling around below is maybe not getting their attention if that's not what they're focused on. Like I said, there are times when they want bottom contact. And that's why I'll use a Ned rig or a swim bait for the weight on a drop shot. And then there are days when they only want it like suspended. They want it up in their face or moving a little bit, right? So I'll throw these two uh, setups basically. A Ned rig, sometimes when I throw the Ned rig, I'll play with uh, the, the drop shot size. I might use a smaller size drop shot. Or another one I like to use is the Berkeley Gulp. So what I'll do is I'll throw a Ned rig down below. And then on my drop shot up above, I use a Berkeley Gulp. So those are some of my most killer wintertime tactics. Now, a little secret that a lot of people don't know that you can actually do. Here's the thing, is you can do this with many different lures, all right? However, here's the ticket. Here's the, here's the real ticket before we get on to the giveaways with, with fishing a double rig like this. For one, if you're finesse fishing and you're drop shotting with six pound test, four pound test, it's pretty imperative that you use eight to 10 at least. I don't suggest anything bigger than 12. 12 will work. That's what I've got on here only because I only bought one spool and I had two reels to spool up. I had a brand new bait caster and a brand new spinning rod. So I was like, well, I want to have a, I'm going to throw a jig and an LV and a couple other lures on my bait caster. So I went with the heavier line uh, instead of 10. And so um, anyways, I would probably be throwing 10 pound test on this because you, if you have two knots in the line like this and you have, if you have a fish on the bottom, that knot up there above on the drop shot becomes a weak point. So your drag has to be set. You want to have a little bit tougher line than usual. All right. Now, secondly, is here's one of the real secrets of this technique. 
regardless of what your lure you're throwing, it has to be open hook. It can't require a hook set or anything of a major hook set. And so what I mean by that is you can't throw a Texas rig or like peg a peg a Texas rig weight or put like a worm right down here with a big text, you know, weedless and, uh, and like use a big split shot or something because that – that weakness in the line, you you can't have that when you set the hook. That will snap a lot of the time, um, even with good quality line. The, the line's just not meant to have that much, boom, instant tension on a knot. So it's important that you use lures that are open hook, like a Ned rig, a swim bait like this, a drop shot, so that what you can do is when you get bit, you can just lift up and reel. Now, then what happens is, is when one fish is on and you have one fish grab this, what will happen a lot of the time is you may get a second fish reach up and grab that, that other lure, and you're not going to ever know the difference. Your pole just might get heavier all of a sudden. There's not You're not going to set the hook twice because the idea is you're just simply doing a pressure hook set anyways, like a drop shot, so that an other fish and you reeling, and when that other fish grabs whichever bait, whether it's top or bottom, they're going to end up hooked most of the time. And this is a killer fun way to catch multiple fish. You will catch two fish at a time. Sometimes it pulls out bigger fish, and it's a perfect way to rule out when the fish are close to the bottom, whether they require bottom contact or if they'll hit something suspended. Because then you can stay, you can say throw a drop shot. You can throw a, a couple different lures down there, uh, an LV 500, a spoon or something. And if you can keep it off the bottom and if they'll hit something moving, this might be more of the ticket. If they're hitting this, then maybe a jig, a Ned rig, um, even a Texas rig, whatever. But it, it means that they want things on the bottom. And if you stop getting bites, if you use something bigger, that can key you in on size, too. You can use something small down here, like a little three-inch swim bait or a little three-inch Ned rig. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> a little spit went down the wrong tube. So either, you know, a little Ned rig swim bait and then something like a six or seven-inch worm up here. And then if you get bit more on this and less on this, so you can change that out. You can also get a Ned rig and put a full-size Cinco on it. So they make Ned rigs that instead of having the little smaller size, you can get a big fat hook and have a big head, use that Ned rig and put a full-size five, six, seven, eight-inch Cinco on it. And then you can do something like put a fluke or a swim bait like a Kitek on your drop shot with a slightly bigger size drop shot hook and you can get and catch those four or five, six, seven pound bass in, in a finesse tactic, throwing bigger baits and the smaller bass might leave them alone or just have a hard time getting hooked. But when you come across a big one, it's going to munch it. So those are some of my winter time tactics. I did a video on this last year. Uh, people really liked it, but I actually caught fish in that video both ways and so as soon as i get my boat i plan on doing this exact same thing we're going to take this uh rig out we're going to take it out to the lake we're going to show you guys it in action and uh hopefully we're going to smack some big ones because i'm going to play around with a couple different models of it so meaning that i'll actually have a couple rods strung up the same way and i'll have maybe a couple different lures on it now remember the weight the 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 lure that plays as the weight at uh, the weight it has to be an open hook lure. It can't be something that requires much of a hook set. So with that being said, though, you can put an LV500 on the bottom and a drop shot on top, right? And when you whip, when you, you whip your LV, you don't whip it real hard. You just kind of jig it. And the drop shot and the LV go flying through the air, right? And then that LV sinks really fast, boom. And then that drop shot sinks real slow. And then you, you reel in your slack and you lift it. And you can dangle the drop shot a little bit and then you go. And sometimes uh, if they miss the LV, they can go for the drop shot. You can get two on time. Um, it, it's a cool little technique I played with. 
I don't know how uh, worthy it would be in the tournament to to fish it as far as if they're biting the LV, what's the point of putting the drop shot above it? But it works. They don't get entangled with each other. So any lure that you want that has an open hook, right, that, that you can just set the hook on it really lightly, you can use it as a weight. So here's another one. You can also use a jig as it too, but you want to use a smaller head, like not a half ounce. You want something like a three-eighths or a quarter ounce, and you want to make sure it has no weed guards. So you have to cut off the weed guard, right? That way, if you get bit, you can just lift and reel. And then if you get bit on the drop shot and your jig's swinging around and a fish gets it, just by the act of the lures moving and then you reeling, if the jig has no weed guard, you can stick them with the jig if you use a light wire hook. So if you use a finesse jig, but something, let's say, uh, up to, let's say, a quarter ounce to three-eighths, maybe at the max, not quite a half ounce, and uh, it's got a thin wire sharp hook, then you don't need to set the hook on that either. So you can drag a jig around or slight hop a jig and have a drop shot above it. And, it, and, and it's very, very awesome at ruling out whether the fish want, again, contact or up above. And what, what would maybe this have to do with it is if they want bottom contact, then they're probably my guess as I'm not a pro, I never look this up, but this is my two cents over years of fishing. If they want bottom contact, in order to, to eat and feed, then they're probably keyed in on things like crawdads and or plecostomus or sculpin, right? They're keyed in on the, the little sucker fish, the little fish. That's when Ned rigs kill it, right? Or crawdads. They're keyed in on something that's literally on the bottom. And, and a lot of minnows and bait fish do not go right to the bottom. They suspend around and they move around. They're not known for sitting on the bottom. Plecostomus a bottom feeder, right? A sucker fish, it will. It'll sit right on the bottom and there'll be hundreds of them. So then bass, when they're eating, they're literally with their face down. So your lure could be right above their head. They're not paying attention. They're focused on those bottom feeding placostomus or sculpins, right? That, that's, a, they're, I believe they're called sculpin or gobies, however you call them. But that's bass candy, right? And there'll be millions of them down there covering the floor like ants. And the bass will be like ant eaters eating them up, boom, 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 right? Or crawdads, when the crawdads are out mating and doing their thing in the fall mating season, right before winter. <clears throat> so, or the bass may be keyed up, up looking up, or out, right? And that's when that drop shot could become really deadly. So it helps you also rule out which type to throw so you don't waste a ton of time. And it helps you in, in patterning fish. So when you first get to a lake, you've never fished the lake before, you haven't fished it for a while, or you just, let's say, haven't fished it for a week or two, and you don't know where the fish are at or what they're doing, give it your best guess, go out, use your graph, look, and then what you can do is you can use this rig to rule out, do they want the bait on the bottom? Are they wanting it suspended? Do they want it moving? As you can see, it has a swim bait. So if you want to just reel the sucker in like a crankbait, trust me, it works like a spinner bait, whatever. You just reel the thing in. So you can, you can actually swim it. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with that one. That's why I started off with that one instead of the Ned rig. Because you can actually cast that sucker out, let it go down 30 feet, and then slow roll it. You can do a lot of different things with it. So you can rule out, you can pattern and find the fish really quick that with that. So <clears throat> let's read some comments real quick, and we're going to get into our first giveaway tonight. All right, let's read some. Uh, let's read some. So we got a new member tonight, too, Callie Bear. Thank you for joining. All right. Double rig fluke rig is uh, been around for a while actually, and yeah, a double rig uh, double rigged fluke works pretty good too. But you wouldn't want to use a Texas rig worm with a drop shot. You don't want anything you have to set the hook on because when you have two points like that, let's say the fish bites on the bottom and you set the hook real hard, well, where that knot is tied at the drop shot point, you're gonna break it really easy if you're using floral. If you're using mono, you'll be okay, but you'll, you know, 
you'll have a lot of stretch. So if you're using fluoro, the, the line will cut itself. <clears throat> he said, did I win? Got my first bait casting reel the other day. Can't wait. Pick up a cheap rod for it to try things out. A little scared, though, to be honest. Ah, you'll be all right, man. Just play with that bait caster. Dial it in. Have fun. Bait casters are awesome. Um, I was working on a video where I'm actually trying to talk about cheap versus expensive. And I have a bunch of cheap spinning rods and then a couple expensive spinning rods. Then I have a couple of cheap bait casters, and then I have a couple expensive bait casters. And I just bought two very cheap setups from Walmart. So when my wife got them for me for my birthday, I told her, go ahead and get those ones, because I actually want to do a video about it. So we have a cheap spinning rod from combo, a cheap spinning combo from uh, Walmart, and a cheap bait caster combo from Walmart. And I'm going to go out there and try to slam it purposefully with the cheaper gear and show people that 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 uh, just get out there and have fun. So if you can only afford this or that, do not beat yourself up. Do not try to keep up with the Joneses and buy something you can't afford or you're going to second guess. Quality does matter. So I always state that, that, yeah, it's a big difference on how your hand feels, whether or not after a couple of days of fishing, you start getting like arthritis type feeling, you know, how heavy the rod is, what kind of fatigue it has, how far it can cast, how sensitive it is. There's a lot of different factors and quality. If you can afford it, it's always better to get the good stuff. But that's, again, we're each and own in our own uh, reality as far as where we're at financially. And so if you can't afford it, that's what I'm trying to say is don't beat yourself up. It's okay. Cheap stuff catches big fish. And I, I purposely actually also talk about like, hey, I caught two double digits on Walmart gear. I talk about I have one of them on video where you can clearly see on the rod it says Silver Max and I catch a double digit on a jig. And it's a Walmart combo. And then before I did, did YouTubing, I've caught so many. I had a bass boat before. And, uh, man, I used to go out there and murk them at the Delta and the lakes. I caught a bunch of big ones. Um, but I didn't have a YouTube at that time. I thought about it. I wanted to. I even had a GoPro and someone stole it. So I got all sad and I didn't, like, buy another one. But uh, long story short, I had a, I caught a ton of big, big fish. And um, they were all on cheap gear. So I didn't get expensive gear until like the last four, four or five years, really, maybe six years. And then I had been a spinning rod fisherman. See, I've been fishing since I was about 10 or 11, and I'm 40 now. So let's just say almost 30 years. So uh, out of that, I've probably only been bait cast fishing like seven to 10 years max. So 20 years of a spinning rod. So I actually, actually, I can take top water. I can take jerk baits. I can take crank baits. I can take a lot of different baits and throw them on a spinning rod a lot better than most people would think. And one of the things about a spinning rod over a bait caster is if even with a cheap spinning rod with floral line, you can, if when you get used to them, you can cast right handed, left handed, sidearm, back, under, and you can make them like a mile. You can cast really, and then your, your precision, like I can cast in small little holes perfectly with a spinning rod. It's just so easier because I've been doing it for so long. But I've been fishing, like I said, bait casters now for 10 years. So I've got it down. I don't bait, I don't backlash that much. But anybody who tells you they don't backlash on a bait caster is lying. Even with like a eight hundred dollar, you know, super, you know, digital reel, you're gonna backlash a bait caster. It's going to happen. I don't care what anyone tells you. It's just a fact of life. So, anyways, we're not over. But I'm working on a video. <clears throat> Sorry, guys and gals. <clears throat> I have a dinner, so. But I'm working on a couple videos for you guys. Mind me, before we get to the giveaway, let me, let me pull them up. So, um, I've got a... Uh,
I've got a video describing this technique coming out. And I've also got a video catching a big small mouth. Damn, I these flies. I got a big small mouth and a big large mouth. So that video is going to be hitting public. And members is every month, every video, every single video I make, you get early access to. Sometimes I go crazy on the live streams when I get drunk and I get all upset about something and I start talking political or life or like drama or like when people start bullying little kids and I get all you guys can always go back and watch me lose my shit. Or when we talk about some crazy topics like aliens or um, Ram Ranch, all that crazy stuff. So that kind of stuff gets tucked in the members only section. So there's a cool like behind the scenes feel. Um, I, I'm working on producing more members-only content that will never get released to the public that will strictly be just for them. Um, and then we're offering things like, so like I said, once a month giveaway, then we're going to be doing things like one-on-one -on -one, uh, live streams. So like if you're in a different state and you're like, hey, how would you fish this pond? Or what would you do at this river? I can actually go to Google Earth, zoom in, see your stuff and be like, oh, and at least try to help out. So <clears throat> do you remember the Ram Ranch night? Oh, yeah. That was hilarious. I was out in fun. I was, like, happy. We had, like, 30 people on. I was like, whoa, we're getting trolled. I was like, oh, I play d and D. I I know what to do with a troll. You got to light them on fire. You cut them into pieces. They just turn into multiple trolls, little bastards. You know what I mean? So that's an inside joke if you've ever played any kind of Dungeons and Dragons or Wizards of Warrior game. Like, yes, I have. <laughs> that's okay. But anyways, let's read some comments real quick. <clears throat> All right, here we go. So I think I fell off a little bit up here. So <laughs> we're going to have a giveaway here in a second, folks. Um. Not announced yet. <laughs> We're gonna do that soon. So I know Funk's on vacation. So I hope you you know having a blast, dude. Have have fun. Fell in forty two water temp and thirty three air temp with fourteen. Ooh, that sucks. I did that one time. You guys want to hear a funny ass story? Well, actually, like my best friend, he did it hardcore. I didn't really go in. I like got my shoe wet, but and I I fell in similar, but it was at a pond. But one day we were out at the river and it was winter time and we couldn't catch them on anything. And we were just like bummed out that we couldn't catch bass. And at the very end, we tried using, I tried using a big old Colorado blade spinnerbait, double blade spinnerbait. And I slow rolled it whoo, 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 and just started catching three to five pound bass left and right. And my buddy, he had one too. So he catches I've got like four or five in. It's like the blast. Like as a kid, to it was like the one of the best days. Like, oh my God, oh my God, you know? And it's raining and it's miserable too. Or was it really rainy? It was like fog and like occasional rain, but we I wasn't that wet. We weren't that bad. We had jackets on and stuff. And uh, but it was just like a miserable winter day, right? And my friend, his name's Jameson Sanders. We used to call him Pumpkinhead. And uh, he got his first bass that day on, on his spinnerbait, got it in. He's excited. It's like three or four pounds easy. And he just shit breaks happy. And I don't think he has another fish on. Maybe his first fish only and maybe one, maybe two. And he goes and he casts his spinnerbait in the tree, right? And it's this big old giant oak that's growing out over the water. And this fool casts his spinnerbait over the tree right <laughs> and this fool <laughs> to his credit he took his jacket off but he climbed up that tree branch and he climbed out to try to get his spinnerbait off and that shit snapped and just dropped him into the cold ass water <laughs> and he came out purple as hell Oh, man, and, and he came out with his spinnerbait in his line, and he swam right, right to shore, got out. I was laughing hysterically. And then he was kind of at first a little butthurt, and then he started laughing hysterically. And it was like, what do you expect me to do? He made it to shore. He's safe. At this point, they're like, 
I mean, I'm worried he's my buddy. He'll be okay though. We had like the car up at the up at the train tracks, right? And this fool's purple, cold, lips chattering already instantly. And I just I'm laughing horribly. Like I'm laughing so bad I can't go. I'm about to piss myself. So it was it was super funny. But he got a spinner bait out. He was all happy. But I'm like, well, now we got to go home. You can't catch any more fish, fool. And he's like, oh, I'll come back tomorrow or later. We went up in the car, turned the heat, read some comments, and let's get back to this giveaway here. <clears throat> you can't hit the Texas rig or leave the point a little exposed. <sighs> Yeah, I I just wouldn't really. I'd I'd be careful, you know. Smack those trout by the marina today. Crappie jig suspended below a bobber around eighteen, twitching it back to the shore. Bam! Float and fly. <laughs> That's what you did. You basically did a float and fly. And I've ca I catch trout and bass, all that, dude. Good job. So you guys went to the uh, Fleming Meadow Marina. And uh, smacked them. Yeah, I got. I don't know how many was in the video. I lost count. I'm looking back. I had over ten over the way before halfway. So I don't know if I got like maybe 25 trout or something in that video. And there was a good. I got bored of putting trout in there. So once I got to the point where the bass tried to eat the trout, I sp I stopped that video and I made a separate one where the bass was trying to eat the trout. And then the trout that I caught after that, I had like four or five. I just didn't even bother uploading them. And I was like, man, I might have caught like 30 that day. It was awesome. So <clears throat> Johnny Morris Carbon Light 2.0 Baycaster Real. Not a horrible one I hear. Oh, yeah, that's a nice one, dude. So is that set up good to use now? Uh, I don't know which one you're talking about, Gerbs. But uh, cheap setups are good to use. Those Walmart Lou's and Abu are the best bang for the buck, in my opinion. Oh, man. I, you know what they used to have there at Walmart, but they don't have it anymore. It was the best bang for the buck I've ever had in my life. I'd buy 10 of them if I could right now, 20 of them. 10 of each, 10 bait casters and 10 spinning reels or 10 spinning setups, if you can get the original ones, was the Jimmy Houston have it to this day and i've got uh two double digits on that i think i know for sure one i don't remember if my, what my other one came on what rod it was on but i've got a double digit and probably like six or seven eight pounders on that rod and a nine pounder six or seven like eight pounders and a nine that almost went ten all on one forty nine ninety nine. One even Guggen's backlash. Yep. Funk Johnny Morris believe that's like a two hundred dollar setup. Yeah. So went to Trinity Lake last week and forgot my electronics. So decided to fish anyways. So I threw a three inch Kitech Easy Shiner. I didn't catch a bass, but the trout loved it. Ended up with 12 trout. That's what happened to me at uh, at Lake Tulick. Is I was I found a bite that was killer, and then I had caught like two fish with it, right? And the day sucked. So then I'm like, well, let's go further up river. And then the further up river we went, all we caught was salmon, salmon after salmon after salmon. And I'm like, well, this is fun, but like five, six salmon later, I'm like. Or we're, not, we're only maybe three or four salmon, something like that. I'm like, I'm like, let's get out of here, dude. I'm like, we're not here to catch salmon all day. So we turned around, went back to the main lake, fished a couple different areas, and then went to a different spot and went back to town. And sure enough, got a big old fat largemouth. That was super awesome. <sighs> the Ram Ranch night. For sure, though. <laughs> I'm a little behind on the comments. Sorry. I didn't do that. Cal, yeah. <laughs> That's how I found you. Yep, yep. 12-inch trout. Nice. Heck, yeah, it was fun. What's up, Bassin and Beer? There were so many. <laughs> I landed an 8-pound carp. 
on the $19 UL spinning Shakespeare combo with the four pound test trend that came on it. <laughs> That's awesome right there. Boss world. Someone give me the real, it looks to be in really good shape. I just need to grab, uh, just need to get a rod to throw on it. Never tried a bait casting reel before. Fingers crossed. I don't hate it, man. You'll like it. <clears throat> four pound for sure. That's crazy. I've seen worse. Though. I've seen dudes catch big fish on little gear. Just got to play it really soft. Yeah, the drag. And then even when your drag's going, sometimes your drag can stick a little. So it's making sure, too, that you, like, give the pole, uh, give, the, give the fish enough flex on the rod so you're not putting too much stress on the reel. Because all it takes is for a little bit of tension to either pop off or snap. All right, folks, thanks, everybody, for hanging out so far. It's been a great night. We're going to keep going. i uh, got a lot more to talk about, but let's, everybody came here, I'm assuming, to hear some fishing tips, but also for a giveaway. So let's, uh, let's get that members giveaway going on, and then everybody else sit tight. Maybe smash that like button for me, would you please? And we're going to start up the wheel of names here real quick. You guys can see into the room. Uh, here we go. All right. So let's get our members put up there first, real quick. All right. All right, folks, I'll be a little bit quiet while I do this. I can type pretty fast, but I need to use a little bit of my brain to do it. <laughs> See, the cool thing about the membership giveaways is you don't even have to be uh, present to win. So when we do the membership giveaways, all members get entered no matter what. And then what happens is the winner has uh, usually 48 hours to get a hold of me or to make a comment that they're, you know, aware. And then we get a hold of each other. So what, if, if they don't, then we just redo the giveaway again and someone else gets it. Hope everybody uh, had a great weekend. Hope not too many of you guys got to work your butt off this week. It is uh, Thanksgiving week, so hope everybody has a good one. It's my birthday this uh, Friday. No, this Saturday. Sorry, Saturday is my birthday. Hopefully I get to do some fishing this weekend or this week before then. I'll probably go do some shore fishing. I'm just abbreviating the names at this point. <laughs> All right. Almost done, folks. All right, got everybody up there. All right, folks, good. <coughs> hey, that'd be awesome. He just joined. You know, every month. Hey, don't forget, though, next month, everybody wins. So for December, all members win. 
So December giveaway is going to be epic. <laughs> I don't know. What, what should I do? Spin the wheel until we get everybody's name to hit once, right? So everybody gets a win that way. Or just say, screw it, everybody wins. We'll show you guys. We're going to have a big old box of prizes. So we'll show you guys what I have planned for you this Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um, I'm excited. I love Christmas. If you didn't tell by now, uh, I like taking care of other people for Christmas. Um, I'm not saying anyone needs it, but like for the kids that do, you know, I do the toy drive. I try to take people on fishing trips or people donate toys or money. And then I, you know, go and I buy toys and I take care of kids. Last year we took care of over 200. So this year I'm hoping, uh, you know, we to even come close. Looks like uh, we're not as, as far along as we were last year. This year has been worse on people. I think than last year, you know, because of a lot of different issues. So hopefully, um, you know, we can close out the month strong. But either way, I've probably got enough to take care of maybe 100 kids or something like that. <clears throat> so. Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> Mm. all right folks now once we do this members giveaway make sure you stick around to get in on the subscriber giveaway so all you got to do excuse me i just took a bite all you got to do is make sure you're subscribed just drop a like on this video and uh, we're going to have you guys all comment in the comment section but save it for now I'll give you guys a keyword. You have to make a comment, and that gets you in on the video. It's only for people on the live stream tonight. So if you catch this later, I'm sorry, but you know, make sure your notification bells are checked when we do these giveaways. Um, and also, when I hit milestones, I do big giveaways that are for everybody, and I usually leave those open for like a week at a time, so lots of people have a chance to get in on those. And as soon as we hit another, we're almost, we're only like 200 subs away from the next big milestone. So share the videos, you know, subscribe, you know, jump in on the channel. And uh, when we hit the next big milestone, I'll be giving away a fishing combo. So when we do that, you're going to get a whole new reel, rod, everything brand new, awesome, shipped right to you, no matter where you're at in the world. Doesn't matter if you're in America, if you're in another country. I do this open to all, so thank you to everybody. And uh, without further ado, hey, Danny's Kitchen, nice to see you on, buddy. Long time no see. <clears throat> Always love seeing the OG supporters. I love everybody, though, man. I'm like a big hippie almost. So let's get this thing going on. How about that? So we got this members giveaway. Let's get it cracking. Um, I'll record it for you guys. And then after we do the members giveaway, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and jump into the uh, regular giveaway for everybody. Hey, we got Adam commented. Hold on. I'll tell you guys about that in a second. All right, so oh, yeah, there we go. Well, I was at Lake Don Pedro. I was trout fishing, and a bass tried to eat my trout. I'm like, and I got it all on video. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, the bass is just chasing the trout. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? Are you catching this? And I know my reel was, bare, was kind of in the way, but I slowed it down, and you can clearly see the bass go down on the trout and try to smash them and pin them. You can see him come up and try to push him up, chase him. And then at one point, you can even see like the bass has him, like looks like halfway in his mouth. And you can see the bass's fin and then the trout's fin and the bass is pushing him like jaws. It just looks so awesome. And then 
I'm like, I'm going to try to catch it. And then it cuts to the next scene and you can tell it's like an hour or two later. It's like all bright. And then all of a sudden it's starting to get dark, like it's sunset. And this uh, Asian dude, Adam, he smacked that bass with a trout swim bait. I told him, I go, hey, there's a big like three pounder right there. And I thought it was three or four pounds easy. I thought it was a nice one. Turns out maybe two and a half, something like that. But it was still a fat bass, nice bass. And sure enough, it attacked his trout swim bait, and he stuck that bass. So it was awesome. It was cool to get all of that on video. Um, the only thing I would just wish that I would have got from cast to catch, him catching that. You know, I got the tail end of him catching it, but um, it was still wicked. So anyways, he just commented on the video, so it was cool to see him jumping on. Now, I want to get out. We're going to record the members giveaway. <clears throat> Wow. MTC beats, huh? So anyways, let's record this. Turn that around. All right. So we're going to record the giveaway. <clears throat> Oi. So the people that are just in the live, basically you're going to come, you're going to be next. So after this is the members giveaway, so right after this, we'll probably chat for a few more minutes, and then we're going to say, everybody, I'll usually just have you uh, leave a comment, giveaway. And so everyone has to type in giveaway. So everyone who types in giveaway is entered in the free giveaway, meaning that you don't have to be a paid member of the channel. All you have to be is a subscriber or even just somebody hanging out on the live stream tonight because i i i mean you could be subscribed you may not be i just go on uh the trust that that you know you're not gonna you know that you you don't mind hitting that subscribe button for awesome giveaways like this i mean if if whatever whatever the case may be but you know what i mean so it's pretty simple and i think like i said we're only about 200 subs away from my next big goal so we'll do an announcement there and when we hit that goal that one's going to be one that goes up and goes on for like a week and then everybody gets a chance to get in like where they comment on facebook or they comment on uh, the actual post on youtube because i'll usually post a video as well to con to go along with the posts on facebook and then uh, so you have multiple different platforms and people will have a chance to get on some cool prizes. So that one uh, we're doing next. We just need about 200 more subs. So it should be any time now. It might even be before Christmas. All right, folks, let's get this members giveaway going on. And uh, thank you to everybody for supporting the channel, for subscribing, for being part of us. Uh, you guys are awesome. No beer tonight. No, I'm drinking um, cranberry juice, going on like a liver detox. Just make sure that, um, you know, take care of myself every once in a while. Go without beer for a couple of days here and there. But uh, <coughs> I'm sure I'll be back on the wagon soon. But uh, let's see here. Hey, Marco. Got you in on the giveaway. How are you doing tonight? Hope everybody's doing good. All right, let's go ahead and uh, do this giveaway. So we're doing the members giveaway now, and then we'll be doing the live stream giveaway for everybody else next. So stay tuned. Don't go nowhere. All right. We'll show everybody's. Let's see. There we go. All right. Boom, new winner. All right, now hopefully we can get you guys to see that. So I don't think he's been on tonight. So he'll have 48 hours to get a hold of us. And if he doesn't, then we'll re-hold the giveaway. And we'll do it like one of the other ones. Hey, Bashafu. Oh, you want to go tomorrow morning? 
What do I got going? I'm down, bro. I don't got nothing to do in the morning. If you want to go fish from shore, let's do it. All right, here it goes. Everybody's name here on the list so everyone can see. This is the members only one, remember. There we go. All right. Boom. New winner. So, Curtis, you are the winner. So, I'll post something. Uh, Curtis LeDuc, you'll have 48 hours. So, basically, by uh, today is Monday. So, Tuesday, Wednesday. By Wednesday night, if you don't get a hold of me, then on Friday, we're going to have another giveaway. And we'll just re-give away uh, uh, Curtis LeDuc's uh, special prize package, which was uh, LV500, River to Sea, and Mega Bass or Lucky Craft Jerkbait. So, Hey, I'm glad to see my best bud on there, Bash Fell, one of the best fishermen I know, period. Love to get him on the show one of these nights and just talk fishing with him. If he's ever down Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, man, you got a spot right here to come kick it and hang out and talk fishing. That's my, you know, one of my, that's the, that's my best friend right there. So, hell, one hell of a fisherman. If uh, you, you know, anybody ever like, yeah, whatever that dude says, I'd listen to it when it comes to fishing. Let's just say that. So, anyways, uh, congratulations to Curtis LeDuc. Now, we're going to have a giveaway for everybody, for all you guys here on the live stream tonight. All you have to do from this point on, we're going to run this for like a good half an hour, and then we're going to hang out. So, if you leave, you can come back, whatever. You can even dip, I guess, and come check the results another day if you want. But you know how the how it goes. You have 48 hours. So if you win, you have 48 hours to get a hold of me. So tonight, all you have to do is comment in the comment section, giveaway. So and please subscribe, like this video. So at this time or any time throughout the night, please comment giveaway in the comment section, and you are going to be now entered for tonight's second giveaway. And we're going to repeat this a couple of times throughout the night, but we're going to get back to fishing talk. We're going to get back to comments and conversation. And before we get off at the end of the night, we're going to conclude the giveaway and we'll see who tonight's winner is. So two giveaways for one. Thanks everybody for watching and supporting the channel. You guys are awesome. Uh, why I do this stuff. So, all right. We got a bunch of entries all way giveaway and members. You can jump in too so don't hesitate comment giveaway uh, make sure you guys put that in the comment section and then what i'm going to do is before the end of the night i'm going to go in and find everybody that's commented giveaway and then we're going to put them in the wheel we're going to record it and we're going to go ahead and do our second giveaway but i want to give everybody a little bit of of a chance because it's hard to hang out on a live stream for an hour straight right so some people might pop in and pop out um might might give a, not might not get here till a certain time so we're going to give them that opportunity and for those of you who also may not have the time you have kids you have something going on you know just make sure you comment give away and come check back in before nine o'clock or around that time and you can check in and see who the get, winner is or hang out and chill with us talk sh you know, and let's have a good time. Talk about fishing. Um, we've got a really good fisherman on tonight, along with a bunch of others. So we've got a lot of great experience here. So this is a good little community where we talk about what we're really catching them on, where we're catching them on. So great little spot to have a comment conversation um, and uh, very engaging. So also, thank you, everybody who's watching and hanging out. So make sure you talk, you comment giveaway. Now, Basha fell. I think you just jumped on, right? Um, we were talking about, I was talking about the old double rig setup that we do where we run like a swim bait on the bottom here and a drop shot on the top, almost like a Saduki rig or a double fluke. You know, you can run a Ned rig down here and a drop shot or even something up there. I like to throw Kitex on here. So maybe with this guy, I might throw a Kitek up here. Maybe with a Ned rig, I might use a Robo Worm. So it just depends. I switch it up and change it up and see. 
depends on how active the fish are. If the fish are active, I'm probably going to use paddle tail, right? So I'm going to use something that caught, has a little commotion. And then up here, I may use something like a four-inch Kitek, something that kicks and is a little big, you know, nice presentation, nice fat profile. Um, so that's what we're talking about, my little little tip for the night. <clears throat> and there's a lot of different lures you can fish that on. So, um, you know, you just got to gotta play with it. It's a cool little lure. It's a cool little rig, and you can throw multiple different things on the bottom. A lot of guys were talking, you know, like they could, you know, maybe Texas rig or, uh, you know, what they might put on the bottom. And uh, in my opinion, the best things you want to do if you're going to throw something on the bottom is use an open hook lure. Use something that doesn't require much force because you have a knot above it and knots are weak spots. So you want to have something that you can just put steady uh, force on so that, you know, that knot can take that weight, but it's the sudden jerking of the of the weight when you do it in a violent fashion that puts extra strain on that and makes the knot cut in on itself, especially when you're using fluoro for sensitivity and castability and stuff. And you want to bomb it a mile and you want to feel every little rock and you want to feel every little tap. That's where... You know, when you're drop shotting, you're, you're going to want to use like fluoro. Some guys will use braid, but I'm a big believer that fish can see, you know, they can they're line, they can be line shy, especially in clear water. So I'll tend to want to use fluoro and I'll want to use something between 6 and 10 pounds. Um, I've actually used to use 12 pound a lot and I caught a ton of fish on 12 pound test. And I used to kind of like when guys would swear that they had to use, you know, six and eight, I'd almost make it a point to try to catch fish on the 12 to uh, not rub it in or anything, but to be like, look. And then if I get a big one, I'm not going to lose my fish, you know. That used to be kind of my naive way of thinking. But if you fight the fish right, you'd be fine. And you get way more bites with the lighter line. So you get more opportunities to hook up with those fish. It's just capitalizing on those opportunities once you do get bit. That's a big thing is being ready too. a lot of times when it's a tough bite and it's winter, you're out there and you're struggling and you're fishing hard. And, you know, it might be an hour in between a set of bites or more, a couple hours. And when you get that first bite and you're not prepared and you miss it because you, you're not – thinking you're going to get any, oh, I'm going to get skunked today, or you're being on negative, then you're going to miss that fish. But if you're in it, if you're if you're in tune, if you're paying attention, then you're not going to miss that, that bite. When it comes, you're going to be ready for it, right? So it's going to greatly increase your chances of hooking up. And then sometimes when you catch one, you can activate a school and start catching more. So it's imperative that you do catch that fish in the winter because you can have a school of fish down there, two, three pounders that aren't moving. And when you catch one of them, it'll activate the rest to catch, to start getting them to bite. Well, if you get that bite and you don't activate that school, you might start casting back down there and it may be tough to get them to rebite again. But once you get one to bite and hook and you, you can get the whole school activated on, or at least a group of them, on what the hell's going on trying to find out what's all the commotion for you know because it's winter they're not moving a lot so there's if they are there's a reason if they're moving a lot it's because you know there's something they're feeding on or some some kind of activity so they perk up real quick and they start once they realize you know it's like a feeding or the the bass is fighting something you know they usually go try to take the lure out of its mouth so those A-rigs work great in the winter, multiple baits, because you catch one, and then the school hones in on the rest. <clears throat> Sticky rice. Got to love it. <clears throat> All right, folks. Give me just a second. All 
All right. Apologize for that. I just got to eat. I'm starving. So, James, David, how's it going? The meth rig, LOL. Yep. Kai Tech. Yeah. Yep, a Kai Tech will work. We've been fishing this rig for a long time, though. And we used to actually call it the meth rig. Like you see Bash the Fell comment there in the comment section. We called it the meth rig. <clears throat> Funny as hell. I don't remember why, because we figured you'd have to be like high on meth to fish that rig or like to think it would work. And then it works. It's like, you know, like, whoa, something. I don't know where the name came from, but yeah. That's what we ended up calling it back in the day. So no, I don't, we don't use, don't, don't mess with that shit. You guys know me. I've always been a burnout, like, you know, a, a friend of the green, but that's about it. I'm not into chemicals. No good. <clears throat> All right. So let's see here. It's 820. We'll let this go a little bit longer. Let's make sure we got everybody in on the giveaway. You're going to get in on their bass. Make sure you comment giveaway, buddy. Come on now. Going with Phoebes. Oh, get them. Go smack them. <clears throat> we want Bash Chaffel on the panel. Yep. Yep, yep. Bash Chaffel knows what he's doing. It would be nice to get him out here one of these days. <sighs> Get them to come chill and talk. Uh, yep, exactly. Uh, when you hear your side gate getting busted into, your car's also getting. <laughs> Man, it's sad though, too. Some areas of the country, it's super bad. Uh, but it's like almost like no, I don't think you can go anywhere without seeing the effects of it. Every city has a ghetto or a corner or a spot um, where you run into someone who's been affected by that. It's like phew, tough stuff, man. That's why I like fishing. Just go fishing, man. You get all the drama, hurt, and pain in life. Just go fishing. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it to get involved in gangs and drugs and all the dumb drama. Just go fishing. That's like, man, that's getting kids addicted to fishing. I think is one of the best things that you can do as a fisherman, fisherwoman, is take the youth, take people, take people that can't go fishing, take people that haven't been fishing, get more people into the sport, especially the youth. Because, yeah, you know, it's tough when the waters get pressured and there's a million fishermen trying to fish one hole, you know, but that's from, that's from us, like, savage weekend warriors and bassaholics that you know we're there all the time religiously the lakes aren't going to be full of people and the spots overcrowded by that occasional dude that wants to take his kids fishing or that like literally goes four times a year you know what i mean so there are those of us that fish like 10 times a month or even more or around there and you know or three or four and then there are those of people who go maybe twice a year, three times a year. And so I think it's definitely imperative to get the youth out there and to get them fishing so that they have some outlet other than technology, gangs, drugs, sex, all the crazy stuff that like ain't going to get them anywhere in life. They won't give them any morals or, or, or real life skills, you know, because, uh, that's just, I don't know, big belief of mine. So take kid fishing, take people fishing. That's why I love and enjoy doing this kind of stuff, sharing. That's why I'm always been the type of person to try to help tell someone how to catch a fish, even if I'm wrong. Or like I really caught a fish like that, but I went all day and I caught like two fish and I'm excited. And someone else might have caught 50 that day, but they're not saying nothing. Oh, oh didn't do. And I'll be excited to tell them how I caught my two fish because hopefully they'll catch some. Um, I've always been like that. Bashafel could tell you, why do you tell them idiots what you, why you, why you tell them? Yeah, I'll be even be in a tournament, right? All excited, telling everybody, yeah, man, I've been crushing them. 
crankbaits and spinnerbaits and chartreuse, slow rolling, be getting like three and four pounders come tournament day. Like, oh, man, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, what did you win them on? Oh, chartreuse, this and that. I've done that a couple of times, but you know what, though? I don't know. I just like Sharon, and, and Sharon is Karen. So, um, you know, I don't know. Just like spreading the love. I'm not rich or well off either, tell you what. But I believe that, you know, if you got more than the next man, it's always good to help a little hand out when you can. You know what is crazy, real quick? I'm going to tell this story before we move on is I've done a lot of things to help people that I don't talk about, I don't brag about. I don't YouTube about, I don't put it on Facebook. There's been, for people that know me, for like my wife, for my good friends, for people who have been there with me through random times, I'll just see someone hurting and go up and give them a hug sometimes or talk to them or or like, you know, uh, buy them a meal or buy them, uh, you know, something that they may need, that, that not drugs or anything. I, don't, I mean, I've given money too, but. I've done, like, for example, there used to be this guy who has one foot and he'd be in a wheelchair and he's got his leg cut off and he was real jacked. He looked like he had skin cancer and all kinds of problems, like he was on his last year or two of life. And he'd sit all the time at this at this place and he only had one shoe and the shoe was just jacked up, like holes all the way, like his heel was touching the ground. So I went to like the Goodwill and I mean, it, you don't go buy a, I mean, you can't buy just one shoe, right? You only have one leg. So you have to buy a pair of shoes and then throw the other one away. So what I did was, is instead of buying them like some brand new ones, I went to the Goodwill and got him a couple pair and I got him some clothes because I seen this guy constantly there. So it was starting to get colder. I got him a jacket. I got him some, you know, warm pants. I got him some clothes, new shoes. And then I went and I got him some waters, some food, some food stuff, like a bag of groceries that would help. And I went and I got him some lunch, like some Jack in the Box. And I gave him maybe 10 bucks, you know, just to make him, he's going to buy with it. I don't care, honestly. Make him feel good for a few minutes, even if it is dope or alcohol. Some people you just can't help, but you may be able to make them feel a little better. I don't know. I don't believe in furthering people's addictions either. It's a hard choice. But I stopped in the middle of traffic, pulled my car over, no cell phone recording. First time ever I've ever told this story. Only person that's seen this happen was my wife. And uh, whoever in traffic saw me that day, but. I didn't make this a YouTube video. I didn't try to make a post out of it, but it's heart. It touched my heart. Like I stopped and I talked to this guy, and he talked about what he really needed. He didn't need money, you know. He just wished he had a pair, you know, a new a shoe, this and that. How he's cold, and uh, I see this guy comes and gets him every day and wheels him home. And I've seen where they go, and they go into, like, a trailer park. They go into a broke area. And uh, I'm pretty sure, like, the guy panhandles, but I don't think they're doing good. Like, I've never seen this guy. Out, and I know my town, and I know people here. I've never seen this guy in good straits anywhere. And I've seen him on multiple places in town, too. So, anyways, I go up to this dude, and I have all this stuff. And he just looks like he's about to start busting out crying. And he's just so happy. He, ex and he expects me to just dump it on him and leave, right? But I put all this stuff in his backpack for him that he's not going to use. I ask him if he wants anything. You know, I got him his lunch. I gave it to him. Got him a water out. And uh, I put his jacket on him for him. I put everything in his backpack. And then whatever was extra, I draped it on the one of the arms things and put it onto the side so it wouldn't hit up against the wheel. And I took this dude's shoes off. Well, he had only one shoe. I took his shoe off, set it aside. It was garbage. It was jacked up. So I took it and I put it aside. I actually took it with me because I didn't want to litter. So, and I put 
on his own, you know, I put his shoes on for him, his new shoe that I bought him, uh, and socks and everything, put a pair of socks on him, a shoe. And uh, this guy was, like, doing everything he could not to cry. And I tied his shoes up, and I was doing everything I could not to cry. And so I, I hooked him all up, and I went on his way, or I went on my way. I seen that guy for another couple months and I don't see him no more. I'm pretty sure he's gone, but do what you can to help people out in life, man, because there's enough assholes in life and even us good people can be assholes, right? So we're assholes enough of the time that I think it's imperative that we do some good deeds to help even things out. So anyways, I love helping out. I just have that nature in me. I like doing these giveaways, helping the community. I talk all about the fishing that I can. So I don't want to be Debbie Downer, so my bad. I got all, like, in a happy, emotional way, though. I like uh, I like doing that kind of stuff. And uh, I've done that stuff hundreds of times. And uh, anyways, I, I know where I was going out with this rant, so I'm sorry. But, yeah, I've done all kinds of stuff. I bought so many people food that was freezing. I brought people, can you know, foods and blankets and 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 sleeping bags out of my own pocket right so um i don't know i've just been that kind of guy so i this the other day i go to the store to buy toys for the toy drive and i go and i buy like 300 dollars worth of toys for the toy drive and i'm leaving and i pull the car up and my wife's in the store and she's there with the cart and all the bags and everything and I pull the car up, and we're going to unload it, but I open the door, and I, I open her door, so she starts loading gifts, and then I see this guy just, like, like, calls to me, and I go over to him, and he's over in the next store over in the next parking lot over, and he's digging through the trash, like, looking for food, and at first, I think he's just hungry, homeless, looking for food, and then when I get close to him, He's like frothing at the mouth and wet all over the mouth. And he's like throwing garbage everywhere. And he's like looking for food, but he's just all crazy talking to himself and yelling. And as I get closer and I get right up to him, he stops. And he kind of realizes I'm about to say something to him. And he just stops and he's looking down. Like I tell him, hey, man, you know, could I get you something to eat? You know, and uh, he looks at me like, he goes, man, I'm homeless. I need money, not food. And I go, are, are you hungry? Do you want any food? He goes, no. He goes, I need money. And I go, so you don't need any, you don't want anything to eat? And he goes, no, man. And he's just all, and then he goes right back to doing his stuff. And I walked off and I'm like, damn. I want hurt too, you know, like in a sense. It just, I was like, wow. There was no saving that dude. Like, there's no helping that, a, a guy like that, at least not in that kind of condition. That was bad. I hadn't seen a human in that kind of bad of shape in a long time. So it was, like, real, like, crazy. Anyways, so I like helping and giving back, and I don't mean to be a downer, but, yeah, um, I like I like giving back to the, to the community and, and I've been through a lot of crazy, I've done a lot of, seen a lot of crazy stuff. And so anyways, the other day that homeless guy saying that, that just really kind of shook me up. That, uh, that there's still people, I mean, there. I know there is, I'm not naive, I'm not stupid. But I genuinely try to help people. I wish he would have just taken something to eat. Because there was another time I ran into a crackhead like that, who, you know, or whatever, a homeless dude that was just on drugs. But he was genuinely starving, looking for food. And I told him, you know, and he goes, you know, I, I wish I had some money. That way I could buy some beer or some whatever. He goes, but honestly, I'm hungry. He goes, if you're going to buy me something to eat, I'll gladly take it. And I, I bought him the food and I watched him all, you know, messed up. And he's all still high, like coming down. But he ate like 75% of what I got him. And uh, then, you know, he couldn't eat no more. and He just threw it away. But. It was, uh, I don't know. I have not had that happen very often. I have had it happen before. So I've had people bite you basically when you're trying to help them. 
You know, it's the weirdest feeling when you're trying to do something good for somebody and they like spit in your face, but it happens. So it's weird when you first see it, but I've seen it a few times. So it just had been a while. So it was like, eh. anyways, let's talk some positive. So it's, it's eight 35. I was just rambling. I uh, went off on a tangent there. So my bad, that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes we go on tangents. I try to avoid the political ones, but sometimes I'll get on like a, you know, a, on a tirade or something or if something happened. Uh, but on the fishing channel here, we try to keep it pretty neutral. If you guys ever want to go see my opinions about other crap in life, that's Common Sense Talks. I have another channel. So I'd like to do some giveaways over there. If we can get that channel up, you know, we'll set some giveaway markers up over there and we'll do some cool giveaways. Cool thing is, though, is on that channel, though, I usually I'd probably give away stuff like uh, autograph stuff. Or something really cool um, that's like news related or related to what that channel is about like gaming and opinion or collectibles and all that um, but here on common sense fishing everything we try to keep fishing related but occasionally i'll go off on some tangents so i got add so sometimes the little rat cage is spinning and then it, boom, <laughs> take a left you know but anyways <coughs> is a drug lol so addictive you know it i'm fishing in a sketchy area or at least stay alert for sure i'm telling you you seen all them videos man <laughs> james david never heard of the meth rig well you have now <laughs> oh man appreciate you guys so i try to read some comments here for a quickie and then we're going to get into the second giveaway uh, so we're going to we're going to say maybe five or ten more minutes, get some more people in if we can share the video. If you know any friends that are into fishing or, or don't know about the channel, maybe share them the link on Facebook or something real quick. Give them a few minutes to jump in. Um, if you're not aware, we're having a second giveaway tonight. So just comment the word giveaway and that gets you entered in for tonight's giveaway. You have 48 hours to answer. And we're going to pick a winner tonight. So congratulations to Curtis LeDuc. He's a winner of the members giveaway. We'll post something on Facebook. I'll post something on YouTube. If he doesn't answer within 48 hours, I, I'm sorry. You know how the rules go. We'll just redo the giveaway then and we'll give it to somebody else. And if he gets a hold of me, you know, soon enough, we'll give him a consolation prize. Like, hey, sorry, we redid the giveaway. You can understand. Um, but, uh, you know, I haven't had that happen yet. Uh, so usually everybody gets a hold of me either, you know, fairly quickly right away or like the next day. So anyways, um, yep. Yep. Oh, appreciate it. James David. Yep. The toy drive, man, is a powerful thing for me. My first Christmas that I could ever remember as a kid when I was a little kid was, uh, we were poor I remember my mom and dad could barely afford to buy me a pair of shoes. I remember my shoes were talking and they were split at the front. And I had, and I remember I was probably in like kindergarten or something. And uh, uh, I was getting made fun of at school for wearing the same shoes for over a year. And uh, they were talking and flapping and everything. And um, I remember being a tough year and my mom and dad – no, might not have no Christmas. And I could barely even remember. Like, I just remember some of that conversation and the feeling. You know, it wasn't a good year. And uh, I had a good memory, too, by the way. It's crazy. Almost photographic. So I remember where we were living. I remember, I think the washer or dryer was broke, too, even. Mom and dad were stressing. And they, uh, they entered us into, like, a you know, something to help out for the needy for Christmas. And when someone heard the story and came over, they interviewed my mom and dad and us. They looked at the house. You know, we were clean people, but just weren't doing too good. And um, the person, you know, put in, I guess, whatever. And we ended up winning a limo ride and a um, shopping spree. And I'll, I'll never forget, I thought I had met the legit real Santa. The beard was real. It wasn't fake. You let me pull on it. And uh, 
I got a wallet with a $50 bill in it or a $100 bill. I forget which. It was one of the bigger ones, a 50 or a 100. I know it wasn't a 20 because I bought a lot of stuff with it. Sorry, guys. But it was me and my brother. So me and my brother, we got picked up by a limousine <clears throat> that had Santa Claus in it. And Santa Claus personally gave us like these little bags. And he said, these are for you. And there was a wallet in them for each, right? And it had money in it. And also a, a couple personalized gifts that just for me, one just for him. I think might have had her names and stuff on it. And then they opened the sunroof on the limousine. I'll never forget this. And they let us. They, I know. I don't think my brother was big enough to hang out. He was real small. But I got to hang out at the top of the limousine and I watched the city of Monterey and all that. And we got to drive in the limousine to the Monterey Mall where the movie theater is at and all that. And me and my brother got a shopping cart and we got to fill it up with whatever we wanted. And it was the best, one of the best memories I ever had of my childhood, my early childhood. And, uh, I think about all the little kids out there that ain't going to have nothing or won't have much. I'm like, not if I can say anything about it, not if I could do anything about it. I'm going to help out and I'm going to, I'm going to try. So, uh, especially it became much more strong. Like in, uh, 22306, my son passed away. And after that, there was like a burning desire to help the, the kids you know, and the, the needy kids even more. And so I started this toy drive ever since then. And I don't do it every year because I can't always afford it because I usually do it all myself. Um, I've been doing this for like 15 years now. And I've probably done it about. And um, usually seven or eight of them. I completely fitted and paid for myself all the way to December. And maybe one or two friends or people might throw in. But with this YouTube channel, with Facebook connections, I've been able to, with the help of you guys, with friends, with people like Virgil, with Danny, with Marco, with people like Mark now, people like uh, uh, Angel, with all the, the donators we had last year, uh, Hilf, no, with all the other guys we had, all the guys and gals who pitched in, who helped out, we took care of Christmas for over 200 kids. So this year I'm excited. We'll see what we can do. So those of you who, who are here, I'm sorry. I, I'm, you probably don't want to hear this over and over again, but I just like telling it for the people who, uh, who never heard the story before or who uh, don't know or not aware of what we do on the channel here. And also, sometimes people jump in on the live stream a little late. So I just sometimes I'll repeat myself or uh, talk about stuff I might have already talked about. So I apologize for the people who've heard it already. But, you know, <laughs> I wish I knew about the meth rig yesterday. Huh? What are you thankful for this year, Sam? Oh, I'll tell you what, that's a great comment right there, James David. Um I think it would be cool. Why don't you all comment in the comment section? Think about it really hard. And what is the most important thing that you're thankful for? And I can answer that right off the bat right now. That before I might have stopped and thought, you know, is it the fact that after being homeless, check this out, after being homeless and living at one point in my life, in people's garages, on couches. I've slept under a bridge with Bas Chaffel one night, the coldest night in my life, one of the most brutal nights of my life. Um, he also is no stranger to know what it's like to not really have a home over your head. Um, so after being homeless is the most grateful thing that I have, being a roof over my head 
or the fact that I own my house? No. After being homeless, is it my job and my career? No. After after all of the stuff I grew up with, after being molested and abused as a kid, is it being here? No. You look at all the stuff, right? This is how I would have looked at this question. I'm being honest with you guys. So I'm going to give you my long answer. I would have looked through all of it like this. Is it the money that I have? Like what little bit of it I do compared to not having any? No. Is it the food on my table? No. Is it uh, the friends and my YouTube channel? No. The thing that I am most thankful for without any questions and it immediately comes to mind is my family. Is after all the crap that I've been through in life and everything I've experienced, I want to tell you, man, I know it sounds corny, but life is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. And you think about like, you know, oh, you know, I just give the wife and kids a hug tonight and I'll tell them I love them. I know, well, we'll go do this tomorrow or the next day. Your kid could develop, you know, something, you die in a crash, an accident. You could develop something or something, something could always happen. Tomorrow is never promised. So take today and take your kid outside and play catch, play, play soccer, play football, play baseball. Sit there and play a game with them on the video game, but not all day, right? It's important that you live life and love your friends, your family. And yes, I'm thankful for my all the different stuff I just mentioned. But if I had to say what was the one thing that I'm most thankful for, without a doubt, I would rather be homeless. I would rather be living like a Native American caveman ancient times with woolly mammoth crap over my shoulders and a fire staying underneath trees or in a cave to avoid the rain and have my family with me than to lose another child or to lose my wife. And for the people that have lost a husband, a wife, a child, a brother, or a sister, and it was way before their time, that's the kind of pain I don't ever want to experience again. And I'm sure one day we're all going to lose people, but it's easier when it's kind of their time or when it's natural. But when you love, when you lose a loved one, like a child it, or like a really good friend or somebody and they're young, it's just, it hurts so bad. And so the most thankful thing I can look back and say, God, I'm just so happy. I'm just so happy that I'm not, dead or in a bad place or in jail for one, but I'm just so happy to have my wonderful children, my wife, and to be able to curl up in bed and hold somebody that I know who loves me and I love them, and also to have kids that I know that no matter how mad they may get at me or whatever may happen, that they love me unconditionally and that I love them, I take a bullet for them. That kind of of connection in life, emotion and love, like that is not ever going to be duplicated through a Ferrari, through an airplane, through any experiences, through anything. That kind of connection and, 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 and understanding and love and care, that only comes, you know, from that kind of, that kind of connection. And so the most grateful thing I have is that, and that's, and, and then from there, obviously friends, the YouTube channel, my job, my house, my career, everything. I'm grateful for everything, for every damn bit of it. I'm grateful for it all. But it all cores back to my family. Without them, I'm nothing. If you strip them away from me right now, of course I could do what I do, but if I lost them, I would not I would be lost. I wouldn't have uh, a ship without an anchor even worse, right? Because life can be a crazy storm. And our loved ones are our strengthening points and are like tie downs for us. Like they keep us grounded. And, and you know, we help each other like a symbiotic relationship, right? But uh, I don't know. I'm a real proud dad. I love my kids and I die for them. So just the immense amount of pleasure I get just simply being a dad. I mean, it's kick ass. I love it. And, and, uh, being a family. So 
And uh, to anyone out there who doesn't have one, you know, I feel bad, you know, for stuff like that. That's why it's like I try to help, you know, I try to help. And the Bash of Hell knows my family. So, like, when I was a kid, thing, it can be a negative, I guess. And sometimes we might let people use us or abuse us somewhat. Or sometimes we're a little too nice when we shouldn't be. But when I was a kid, the way my family was raised is we actually had homeless people stay on our couch a couple of times and live with us for a couple of different groups of people that my mom and dad had opened up our home to. And most of the time it went fine. One time we did have a, a group uh, that basically, you know, stole from them and or robbed, you know, not, not like gunpoint, but just stole a bunch of stuff and took off. Yeah, and that was painful when you're trying to help somebody and they they put the knife in your back. But the one thing I can tell you that I ever since I was a little kid that my parents have always taught me, although I've learned a lot of negativity and yelling and bad things, was always, though, to be uh, open and to, to be caring and to take care of others. There is a strong like a uh, sense of guardianship instilled in me. Not like motherly so much, like some of that, but also protector. Like, I don't like seeing women hit. I don't like, I'm also that idiot that if I walk up and I see a group of six dudes pummeling one dude, I'm going to probably not be able to control myself. And I will probably go get into a fight with the six dudes. And and I may not even know any of the any of the situation like the one dude on the ground could have raped one of the six dudes sisters or wife or whatever but i i without without that kind of information that's like a one in a brazilian other than that you're usually going to assume the guy's attacking the guy or is the bad guy right so i see five or six dudes pummeling the dude that's not fair that's not cool that's not okay in my book i'm going to go do something and so I don't know. I've gotten my butt in some places I shouldn't have been before, but I've also saved a best friend or two. You know, I've, I've prevented somebody from being killed, from being throttled before to death at a bar fight. I prevented a dude from losing his life. And I've also gotten into a few fist fights myself and I didn't lose them at all. Uh, but uh, I think it's always because I go in um, every fight I've been in except one has been like righteous in defense of somebody or myself or something, you know, I don't go looking for trouble. So, but that's the kind of guy I'm trying to help people, you know, anyways, I don't know how I got on that. Just a crazy circular rant where one tangent leads to another tangent leads to another, but we tell stories on this channel. Sometimes I got to have something to fill the time up with. Right. I mean, Honestly, I could I try to break out. I can get a bunch of fishing stuff here. We could talk fishing all night too. But sometimes you guys get more engageful and we get more comments and a cool conversation going on when we cover some of these tangents and crazy things. So I don't mean to uh what do you call uh 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 ransom or like hijack the giveaway, right? People are here for a giveaway and now they have to sit through 30 minutes of me preaching about some weird shit or something like <laughs> Sorry, folks. But hey, all the best intentions, right? So anyways, this channel, we try to do good. We try to help teach fishing tips and tricks. We have good conversations. I try to put a smile on people's face, crack a joke here and there, and, uh, you know, uh, help out. So uh, try to be positive here, help the fishing community and help kids and all that good stuff. So Without further ado, please make sure that you have commented the word giveaway and that you've hit the like button. And we're going to go ahead and have the giveaway tonight. So I'm going to clear the wheel of names. I'm going to come back and start reading some comments. And then we will close off the night uh, with this. And then I've got to go fix uh, I promised here something. Yeah, I'm such a nice guy. I don't tell nobody about this, but I mean, I'm just blabbing something to uh, kill the time and talk with you guys about. I'm going to go fix the old lady's faucet and replace her faucet for free. I'm not getting paid. 
Uh, she's just an old lady with no money, no means, and her house will literally start flooding. She's got a bucket under there. It's like filling up every day. She's old. She can't be getting down and up, down and up. And uh, it's a real simple faucet chain job. It's going to take me like 45 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes of work and a good 30 minute, you know, 20 minute drive there, 20 minute drive back. So a good hour and a half. I'm not going to leave until after this. So yeah, I'll be up till midnight fixing this lady's faucet and I'm not getting paid. But yeah, anyways, so that's always fun and Danny, but I did promise her we're going to do that. So we keep our promises. I told her after like around nine or 10, I'll be over there. So anyways, let's get your names in there. All right. Oh man, Bastia fell on. We got when you get a chance, uh, you want to go fishing from shore, let me know. I'll whack them. I, I want to get out and fish, but I'm waiting for the boat. So the boat could be in the shop another month or so. I have no clue. Could be in there for a week or two. Could be in there for two months. I don't know. Um, if it's in there much longer, I need to reach back a hold of them, get a hold of them, and find out what the hell's happening. But the um, main concern is as long as it's ready before tournament time. Next year, you're up to hardcore for fun so we're going to do that for the channel here i'm going to be out there hardcore grinding tournament fishing pre-fishing i'll be fishing all over the place so smash that subscribe and like and follow make sure the notification bells are checked that way you guys get in on these cool giveaways when i'm doing good in the summertime i actually will do random giveaways every couple of weeks usually just to throw out some help Right now, I'm just trying to get by until the next warm-up comes. <laughs> All right, let's see where we're starting. We got the Funkin' CT and Asha Fell and Charles Kill. So, All right, now I know where I'm going to start. All right. Thanks for bearing with me, folks, and dealing with my rambling, my rambling self. Appreciate everybody for supporting the channel just by watching and hanging out too. Barefoot and Ronald. And then the pops over at the sandwich shop. That was cool. <clears throat> Can't put it down twice. I'm only gonna put your name in once. <laughs> All right. Brand new to the channel. I don't think I've seen Kamse Apka move online here before, but I don't care if it's someone new who wins. Like those are that's what these are for. To help give back to the community and to get more fishermen in here to check out the channel like hey man you know you catch more flies with sugar than shit so racho and keeping it real right. we're almost done folks I think <laughs> I don't know so Ray and Nicole. Uh, fix a I gotta get to be a plumber. And then I get to fix my my I got two toilets to fix in my house too. So <laughs> gotta look at Daddy's kitchen, Marco Houston. Ooh, these damn flies, I tell you what. All right. Then we got Pops World.
James Bridge. All right, so let's read out what you guys are thankful for. So Bass Chaffel, he's thankful for family and true friends who are always there for me, just like you and your family, Sam Pro, who love my circle. I will also thankful for wrestlings. Yep. Well, I love you too, buddy. I straight no homo. <laughs> I love you, man. That's uh, that's my brother right there. So. I'm thankful for the health of myself and my family. There you go. Um, James David told that his mother, after being diagnosed with breast cancer, was going through aggressive chemo. She is now in remission, is now doing really well. I'm glad she didn't catch COVID, too. Well, I'm glad for you, too, James David. That's a tough battle, and uh, I'm, I'm supporting. Now. I'll send a prayer every bit of the way I could, man. That would have been a death sentence. Yeah. Glad to hear everyone's family is in good health. Great to hear. Yeah. I've been through some shit, so I'm thankful to be alive. I can understand where you're coming from there, Charles. <clears throat> All right. Come through if you're in Merced. Oh, I'll be in Merced. Maybe I'll come through later tonight. You're the pro rambler. <laughs> yep, the Dodge Rambler. Was there, isn't there a Rambler? Which vehicle is the Rambler? Oh, man. That was a good one. I uh, appreciate it. Cam say. Hold up. I've seen more flies on shit. I know. Damn it. There's all right, in the room. There must be a pile somewhere because these flies won't leave me the hell alone. The Rambling Man. Oh, no. I'm going to be at 2K. So this has been a slow year of growth for me. It seemed like the Kelsey Bass Ranch helped get a lot of uh, toy drive trips going on. And uh, I don't know what it is. Maybe my focus on the live stream side of things has slowed me down. I, I, I think that's what it is as far as growth. But I enjoy doing this more. Like, I like recording my fishing trips and putting those videos out. That's never going to stop. And as I get more free time, I'll do more of those videos. If the boat gets out, there'll be a lot more cool videos coming on the channel. Uh, the whiteboard stuff, all that great stuff. But this connection that I have, being able to speak with you guys, live stream, give tips and tricks, things that just pop into my mind, I can blurt them out or say them. And then maybe I'll do, you know, there's times when I work on videos. Damn, these flies. <clears throat> so there'll be times when I'm working on a video and I'll say like this big old thing and then I might edit it out and like decide not to put that in there. And I don't know, maybe you guys like it or won't. So the live stream gives me a chance to talk about different subjects. I can kind of tell when I'm turning you guys on or off, right? So if I'm not doing too good with those subjects, I know they're probably not the biggest, uh, best subjects to hit, right? And it's cool to see you guys get all animated, excited on certain subjects so you know what to do more of. But the live stream is still like one of my favorite places of uh, hanging out on YouTube right now. Um, I like doing the, the videos, but I look, you know, there's so many bass fishing guys out there doing videos. But it sucks. A lot of them got 10 pounders in their backyard, stocked ponds, fishing Florida, you know, fishing where there's a million different holes, million different breeds of fish. Um, I mean, we can get in a rut. So, you know, I've been doing some trout fishing, I've been doing a bunch of other stuff. So, I'm trying to branch out, but uh, I think my niche is in bass fishing and I need to stick with it. But uh, live streaming allows me to go down all kinds of different potential roads and paths. Yes, this is a fishing channel, but I slowly try to divert you guys over. Common sense talks. If you're interested in just literally building something up like this, but where it doesn't have to be fishing related, and sure, we could talk fishing, but you really want to get into the weeds about news, politics, whatever, I'm more than happy to yap on that crap all day, too. Um, you'd be surprised. I'm a fooled and knows a little bit about everything and 
You know, um, there's not a, a lot of subjects I don't know at least something about. It could be interesting to, to go down all kinds of different paths. Um, while at the same time, I'm actually a professional in a few different subjects, you know, HVAC, you know, certain things I actually could tell you I'm a legitimate professional, um, a certified, you know, like know my shit. And there's a few things in life, but mostly, you know, it's cool. Like I dabble in like learning all kinds of stuff and, and going over all kinds of stuff. So common sense talks, if you guys want to see this kind of thing grow, hopefully into a bigger atmosphere. Otherwise, this channel will always be limited to fishing, outdoors, hunting, fine with me. And uh, there's lots of topics and lots of people involved in that stuff. So hopefully we're going to do some outdoors, some hunting videos. We'll do some camping videos. Of course, I don't have a gun, so we'll have to do some bow hunting videos or knife and bow. Uh, but um, I'm down to go do it and try. Uh, it'll just suck if you go out for two or three days and you don't get anything. There's, you know, not much to show other than you crawling through bushes and walking up and down hills, huffling and puffling all day. Uh, so, you know what I mean? Um, I, I'd like to go doing, you know, stuff like that, do some also some camping, RVing or backpacking and whatever, just a little bit of that kind of stuff, sprinkle it in. Idea is basically this is outdoor channel, right? Fishing, fishing mainly. Uh, so I don't think everybody wants to get preached to about politics and news and shit. But if you're interested in that stuff, go check out Common Sense Talks. Leave a subscribe. And uh, the more of those subscribers we get there, the more I'll be able to put effort into it. And when I do a giveaway over there, I'll do something crazy cool. Like the fishing giveaways won't be able to touch what I'll do over there. Is I'll actually do like, say, an autographed Joe Montana jersey or I'll do a Ty Cobb autograph or something crazy, or we'll do a rare vintage thing that you can't get anymore. Because I'm into all kinds of cool stuff, so if you're interested in seeing that stuff grow and chat with me about aliens, about conspiracy theories, about history, the government, about uh, science, and all. I mean, I, I love getting in the weeds about anything even about weed. So, you, you know, we'll talk about pot. We'll talk about uh, all the crazy stuff I've seen, done, been through as a teenager and a youth. You know, that's the channel for you. Uh, head over to Common Sense Talks. So without further ado, before we lose everybody, I've gone a little bit over our time, so I apologize to you guys and gals. Let's get this second giveaway out of the way here. Make sure you smash the like button. If you're here, last chance, if you haven't done it yet, make sure you comment the word giveaway so that you get entered into tonight's uh, uh, second giveaway. And uh, excited to, um, you know, Get this thing going on. Yeah, yeah, common sense fishing reports, right? Well, that's what I've got, two channels. So the idea, too, is believe it or not, you can have one guy that you really like following. And instead of posting all your content to one channel, if you break it up into multiple channels and you end up growing big enough, then you have multiple streams of revenue. So instead of having one channel with just all your revenue coming through there, you can spread out your channels multiple sources. If something happens to one channel, you still got your others. Uh, if one topic gets hot or cold, that channel could do good or bad, and it, it won't influence the others. For example, you start talking about politics, you could lose half of your viewers. So if your viewership is based on fishing, you don't want to introduce something that's going to cut into your viewership, right? But if you have a politics channel, the people that go there from your fishing channel, you also grab people that are interested in us that, right? And so when you start talking about stuff and then maybe these people don't agree with you, they don't have to go see that channel. So it's a lot of uh, a lot of benefits to having it. That's why I did it like that. But um, it's a Peasley little channel. We're only at like 40 subscribers or something like that. So anyways, if you want to help a guy out, you can go check it out. Otherwise, let's get this giveaway going. Sorry for yapping at you guys all night. Um, hopefully this double up rig really try to throw it this year in the winter and fall. You'd be surprised. It's so fun. It's crazy to catch fish on. It's fun when you catch two at a time on it. 
And uh, it really can be a good tool to help you figure out whether the fish want bottom contact, meaning, you know, you can use a drop shot, bounce it around all day, and you might notice you only get bit when you let your drop shot die. That means those fish just want bottom contact. If you would have instead thrown a Ned rig, a jig, or Texas rig, or something and dragged it along the bottom, you would have had much more bites. And then there are days when you bounce on the bottom a jig, a Ned rig, a Texas rig, and if you had just popped your lure up a few feet higher, you would have got more bites because they wanted it suspended, which is where the drop shot comes in handy. So that two, that double rig, meth rig, the super duper rig, whatever, that is the awesome technique. So hopefully just we got some cool entertainment out of that alone and our nice ramblings for the night talking about all kinds of crazy shit. And uh, let's get this giveaway over with. So smash that like button. And last but not least, please, I don't want to leave anyone out. So before I hit that wheel, make sure that you had a chance to mention the word giveaway and that you commented that so that I know that you're on the wheel. All right. I know, right? The flies on my head, on my shoulder. They got me dancing and bugging around in here like, ah, salt shotguns, Venus fly traps, right? I need to get one of those things that dangle down and put them up. Dude, honestly, though, it's been cold. The flies have been gone. And this is a three-car garage, right? I took the third car garage area, walled it off. We built a little man cave. The problem is, so I got a door right here. I got another door that goes into the backyard and then the door that goes into the garage. So if the garage door is let open and then the flies get in the garage, they naturally make it here because sometimes I'll have some food in here or just like this is my man cave. So it's where I have the lights, the computer. I've got a heater and air conditioner on the wall that I can turn on. So in the summer, I can keep it cool in here. In the wintertime, I can keep it warm. So the stupid flies will migrate in here and then they get trapped in here and they bug the shit out of me. So it's like, ah. Anyway, so there are our, our guests for tonight's live stream. Usually there's not this much activity been bugging me, but I guess we had a warm day today and a couple might have found their way in. So yada yada, right? Anyways, we'll read a couple more and then let's get to this uh let's get to this giveaway. Yeah, dude Bashafell, I'd love to go hunting. Let's go bow hunting. Uh, yeah, I got some trout fishing videos, chopsticks, Mr. Miyagi. Oh yeah. Catching cooks the fly. <laughs> Drop the link to your other channel so others can subscribe to it, Sam. All right, good idea. Let's go over here. Let's go to um, – I think I could do this without screwing up my uh, – let's see here. Channel URL is what I think I have to do, right? So I go to you no know, dashboard. I gotta go to bump bump. Your channel about details description no. I forget how to get my URL. Home. Ah, uh, this should. Or no, I can't be in the. I think I have to be in the channel like this. Yeah, here it is. Here's my channel URL. Haha. Uh -huh. Stupid thing. <laughs> I got you on the wheel, David, James David, Ram Ranch. So there's my URL to Common Sense Talks. It just popped up, all your porn. Oh, no. Dad Nabbit, you caught me. <laughs> you know, I can do the live stream where I share the screen, but I don't know how to switch back and forth. Once I figure that out, dude, it'll be awesome. It'll be on. All right. 
Meth rig and giveaway. <laughs> They're from Oswell Wood Camo face paint, snorkel gear, and a knife in your mouth looking for carp. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm close to that. You want to see that video? I've got two of them where I'm fishing the Merced River in an inflatable raft, destroying them, hiding down because I was only one dude. I was just me in this big old giant raft. So it's super hard to like control or do anything. The raft's spinning in circles. I still catch like 20, 20 something fish each trip. And I catch a couple like four pound, like I caught like a three or four pound spotted bass, a four or five pound largemouth at Cressy at the Merced River. So it's hilarious. And I'm all like my head busted and I'm all like sore. I have to get out and take a break. I'm like, oh. I had a ton of fun though shooting that video. Uh, let's make sure Mr. James David is on here. Bono, Bono. Yeah, you're on there. All right. So I'm going to give away. If you don't see yourself there, speak up for now. Speak now or forever. Hold your peace. So we're going to get this giveaway over with and let everybody go for the night. So I'm sorry to to uh ransom you guys or what do you kidnap you guys like this so we got bash Chappelle, funkin ct charles chalk barefoot bassin ronald rokemore i got ricardo torres ray Nicao, danny's kitchen marco houston pops world and james david so if you did not hear your name, I don't have you on the wheel. Please make sure you comment giveaway and smash the like button and uh, you're entered. And we're going to hit that wheel and get this over with tonight, folks. Thanks for watching, too, by the way. I think, you know what, regardless, so Christmas I'm doing a giveaway where all members win. So next Christmas, all members are going to get a gift from me. So every single member of the channel who's a member, not a subscriber, membership is different. So it's like a monthly subscription, gets you early access and giveaways and all kinds of cool stuff. So, But because it's Christmas, I'm going to do one uh, free giveaway for the whole community whether you're a member or not, and uh, we're going to leave that one open. So that way everyone has a chance to get on it. They don't have to listen to me rant and rave for an hour or two. So you can just go in, leave a comment, like the video, and boom, you're entered. And you can check back later and see if you guys win. So Merry Christmas to everybody. You know, I get excited about this time of year, so happy to help. Now, let's do this. Kamzi, you're in the giveaway. Mike Dozier, you're in the giveaway. Let's make sure I got your names in there. Uh, Mike, yeah, and Kamzi, I just got your first name in there. I don't have, like, your whole uh, Kamzi. Um, Kamavong, I'm Kamavong, I'm, I'm Kamavong. I can speak a little bit of, like, two or three different languages. I try not to butcher names, but eesh, you never know. All right, so with that being said, I'm pretty sure we got everybody on. So let's get this giveaway over with. I'm going to go ahead and record it. And then as soon as we're done, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to say good night, let you guys go. And I'm going to go ahead and take off to go run a service call tonight. And uh, we'll link up and make sure we get you your gift uh, later. But if you're on and you're, you, you watch yourself win, great. So all you have to do is just get a hold of me, and we have to figure out usually, you know, how to uh, send sensitive information like, you know, an address or whatever. So usually you'll Facebook message me or however, and because uh, YouTube doesn't have a lot of friendly ways to get a hold of creators. I guess that's good for creators once they get big. That way they can't get, like, stalked and blown up and have people annoying them all day, but. At the same time, it kind of does suck because you're cut off from your community. So let's record this here. So we're going to record the name list. So you guys all see the names are here. Boom, right there. There's the wheel. Okay. All right. Good luck, everybody.
Thank you guys very much. Whoever wins, appreciate everybody. Boom, boom. All right. And the winner of today's second giveaway, we're going to play it for you guys. Kamsi almost. Okay. All right. Good luck, everybody. Thank you guys very much. Whoever wins, appreciate everybody. Boom. Racho Bunch. Congratulations, buddy. Now, everybody, don't forget, there's going to be another one next month at Christmas. So pay, stay tuned for that, and you don't have to be a member. All you have to do is be a subscriber. And uh, members, everybody. So if you want your shot at a nice, cool Christmas present, that'll be the last, uh, last shot to get in before Christmas because everybody's going to get a chance. All right. Woo-hoo! <laughs> good luck or good congratulations, buddy. Uh, uh, we had a good conversation tonight. Appreciate everybody watching and joining. So, congratulations to Racho Bunch. Now, some parting words before I take off tonight. Don't forget, we should be back on Wednesday and back on Friday. It's this Saturday, so we'll probably do some kind of party celebration Friday where we'll just chat and hang out and talk and just go like we usually do. I'm probably not going to be uh, sitting with any problem. Um, or maybe I will. I'll just drag everything in here and we'll just see what you guys want to talk about. But uh, that'll be like before my birthday. So also uh, Christmas giveaway for all members. So the, the for uh, Christmas, I'm going to basically – give a notification that all members have won. All members will have uh, the entire month to get a hold of me. If there are certain members that just don't want their gifts or just are supporting their channel and they bought memberships, but they really just don't care, I probably have one or two of those. Um, uh, we'll see if they don't mind, then we'll just do a giveaway and give their, their gifts away. So that'll probably be in January. Now we do have a goal set when we hit our next goal. I'm going to be giving away a combo. So don't forget we have polls on the site where you can go to the community tab and vote to see what you guys want to win. So right now there's a poll up for the next giveaway after Christmas. It's do you guys want a spinning combo or do you guys want a bait caster combo? And do you guys want medium? Do you want medium heavy? So let me know what type of rod or reel you guys want, and that's coming up next. So thanks for watching. You guys have a wonderful night. I hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. So Racho, just reach out to me, and we'll get you your tackle pack. So thanks, and you guys have a have a good one. Um, and I'll have to – who won the first one? I'll, I'm all burnout. So anyways, all right, guys, we'll see you guys uh, on the next one. Take it easy. Uh-huh.